Hi, my name is Patricia Rollinson, and I am going to show you how to paint a rose in seven easy steps um, using a seven piece stencil set. Um, it's easy. Any beginner, literally a rank beginner, can paint a rose that looks exactly like this. Um, you have, don't even need to have any painting skills. We're going to do it all with some crescent brushes and um, one um, oh, pouncing brush. So um, you could sit down your grandchildren and or your, your kids or your friends and you can paint roses on just anything. So I'll show you how easy it is and then I'll tell you how that you can make a rose in any color that you'd like. Today we're going to show you how to use a simple stencil set. This is a seven piece stencil set and each layer of this rose is on a different layer of each stencil. So even if you don't have any idea about rose anatomy or how to build a rose or how to paint a rose or especially how to do a stroke rose, I'm going to show you how in probably about five minutes that you can create a beautiful rose just using this system. We have a step-by-step -step grayscale guide that shows you what and where each of the steps goes so that you can deepen or, or fade out whichever way you want to go. And then there's different sizes. We've got this bigger set of rose stencils. We've got a little bit smaller and then after that we get on one sheet and we go down to a pretty tiny little guy right here. So we've got a bunch of varieties so you can mix and match. If you had um, probably three of the different varieties you could make a whole bouquet, um, go around a box, whatever you want to do, make a border, paint it on a wall. And then in addition We've got rose leaves, so we've got a variety of sizes on each one with stems so that you can put your, um, your rose and your leaves onto everything, and it's all super easy for you to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get started. We're just going to replicate this. I'm going to keep my circle up in the upper corner. If you need it positioned a different way, just keep an eye on where that circle goes because they're all laid out to match exactly to each circle. So the circles are your like your lineup. However, there's a cute secret. This is actually etched to the outside line of this on every one of them so that you can position it um, without the circle, but the circle is just an easy like visual to know um, which way is up. Okay, I'm gonna base using an ink sweeper just because it's nice and big. I could use a jumbo dauber as well. And I'm using a mixture of bleach sand and warm white. And then I'm going to, you know what, here's I want you to have a successful um, painting experience, and one way to prevent pain is to tape. If you tape your stencils in two corners, then you'll keep it lined up and you won't have it doing what that just did to me. Make sure that your background is dry though, otherwise it can peel up your paint in an instant. Okay, that's much more controlled. You always want to go straight up and down with your application. Don't use too much, and I'm blotting off like I'm pouncing over on the palette, and then I'm making sure that I'm pouncing away from my pile so I don't end up with globs of paint. Better to do two quick um, coats than to do one thick and have a big mess. Thick and fast is always the way to screw up in stenciling, so sneak up on it. Okay, so that's a pretty good base coat. I'm going to go ahead and put my applicator in um, my water basin and then when I get ready to wash my brushes I'll just rinse that out. Okay our next step is to go ahead and lay that down and line up our leaves or petals I guess these aren't the leaves and I'm just using the same two pieces of tape. All right we're going to use one of these short little stubby um, crescent brushes mine are kind of caked with paint but they're real stiff and real like um, they make a soft, soft, um, fadey kind of blend. We're going to go into pink chiffon and we're going to wipe it all off. This is called dry rubbing. I'm going to wipe it off on our paper towel. And what we're going to do is we're going to, following our map, maps are easy. Okay, we're on layer two. So we're going to put the pink chiffon everywhere where the shading is, but draw it out to a little bit in the middle of the, of the leaf. And I've wiped it off and talked it off dry. So I'm just going to rub, and I'm going to rub close to where the shading is. And then as I walk out, I'm going to fade and soften my rubbing. Okay, so the way that's going to look is you're going to get that nice, soft, 
fade that goes out to that um, to that edge. Okay, and that's going to allow the next color that you use to sit closer on top. Now I'm going to put that brush down, and I'm going to pick up some of my warm white, and I'm going to go out to my edge. Just give me a little bit of a pop. Okay. And then we'll sneak into it. I'm going to keep these three brushes kind of going here. And as long as I'm dry, I can move on. We're going to go into a mix. Um, we had settled on a color called Spice Pink. If you have it, then you're good to go. But um, Spice Pink is a color that's been discontinued. So we mixed it using Peony Pink and coral blush and um, bleached sand. So now what I want to do is I want to do this one closer. I don't want to go out as far as I did with the um, with the pink chiffon. And then when we get into our little corners, that's where you really want to pay a little bit more attention and give it a little bit more oomph. And you can just fade that out. And we can peek again. I'm just I'm peeking to show you so that you can see how pretty that looks. Okay, so that's just nice and faded. It's a beautiful little um, flower petal. So I'll repeat again on our other parts. And now, since I already showed you how to do one, what I'm going to do is just do this one all the way through. So I'll go in with my petal pink, or pink chiffon, sorry. And then I'll go on the shady sides on your mat diagram. And then sometimes it's a little bit hard to um, get exactly where you want to go. You have to switch down to a smaller brush. Okay, and then this one we would bring it way out because there's a little fly in here. Okay, way out, and then we would do our white at the edges. Go sneak it into my bottle for some more white. And you just want that to fade. If you get a nice sharp line there, just switch back and forth and kind of just dust, you know, almost like a little feather stipple kind of whisking. Okay, now we'll go into our pink. I'm always going to start where my pink is going to be the strongest. And the reason for that is, is because that gets some of the paint off and then when you first set it down, it is going to be very strong. And so I want to look where my darkest, darkest, darkest need to be. And I'll focus there. And then I'll run along and round out my corners. And I could even repeat if I wanted to Increase some strength. And I'm picking up just a little bit. We've got media acrylics, which are phenomenal, um, highly pigmented colors. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that while I'm in here. And I'm going to give just, just a little snudge of those two colors, which is transparent red iron oxide and quinacridone uh, magenta. Get just a little teeny bit of depth. So you can see how that's just really got a nice depth right there. And lay it back on there correctly. And then we'll finish. So I haven't got white out on these other two. <clears throat> now this one's a little bit tricky because this is the bowl down here and so don't just highlight or shade to the top because as you switch to the middle things change just a little bit. That's why we have the map. Okay, and so then out here on this outer edge is where our white gets. And the lighter colors, the things that are the most close, you don't have to um, you have to dry off on your paper towel as much. Okay, then that switches and it's in front now. 
I had already gone ahead and I applied the paint to that inside edge. So I did exactly what I said not to. So using that little map is a great thing. So we have this down here. That's a little better. And make sure I'm good here. And I'm just consulting my little map. I love that it's just like paint by numbers. Super easy. And by using the same couple brushes, um, you know, just gives you the ability to just kind of switch and swap between. Okay, and then this little guy right here is just one color. And this little guy down here is dark. And then this guy is over on the edges. Some people have spend their whole painting lives wanting to paint roses and just can't figure it out and I understand that frustration so when I was we were talking about um, stencils to do doing a rose multi-layer one I don't even think it exists very well done um, they just look stencily ours look painted um, so I think that um, our design team did a phenomenal job so I'm using more of that quinacridone magenta and the red iron oxide I'm just going to deepen that bowl. I can go back as well. Give just a little deepening. Okay, I'm going to call that. Dun, dun, dun. See how easy that is. All right, so step three, we're going to go in with our um, pink chiffon. And we're going to do all of the petals at the same time. So the pink chiffon will go and start where the dark is. And it'll go much faster if you're doing all of your steps at the same time. Okay, and I'm looking at my map. Pink chiffon is next to this rim here. Remember to switch to smaller crescent brushes if you need them. Okay, and I'm going to put pink chiffon here even though that's dark to tell myself that I did it already. This one right here, that little V is at the bottom. Okay, and then this one is nudged up next to the rose. Now I'll go into white. See how much faster that goes when we're not switching brushes with, for every petal. And remember, when you've got things crossing in front of other petals, this is going to be dark over here, and that's got to read nice and white or nice and bright. So you want to make sure that you establish, you know, that, that brightness. It doesn't have to go all the way in. You just need to establish it as far uh, against the where the dark is going to be. And I'm going to go into our mix. Is where we want to be a little bit careful. Okay. The neat thing about these brushes, if I want this to be kind of bulby and out over here so it looks like it's a little bit wavy, I can easily achieve that. Something that you would have to have high skill of floating to do. With flip floats and all kinds of other shenanigans. So kind of neat that you can achieve this with just a little bit of dry rubbing. Okay, so this gets a dusting here. It's just kind of a fade. Okay, and then down here, I'm definitely in the, the dark. This is just dark. And down here, we're at the base. And then here, we're across. And we'll go into our Quinn and our Red Iron Oxide. 
And I'm doing that on the same brush as um, as the um, the mixed pink. I'm not taking this color all the way out either. Okay, so now we'll do our reveal. There we go. Looking cute. All right, here we are with step four. So we'll go into our pink. Do a pink chiffon. And we're going to take a look at our map. So we are darkest on the inside and the bottom. The bottom and the top there. I love having that map tried to paint this the first time without it and it's like no definitely got to have a little have a little mappy poo okay and this is at the bottom and we'll get into white If you see any areas where you have um, the other color is showing outside, then what you want to do is just go in there and make sure that you cover that other color up so that you have a nice, clean, unstenciled look. Okay, and I'm going to back off of my um, red iron oxide. This is reading a lot more pink and mine is going coral. So I'm just going to put just a touch just to drag that trans um, the quinacridone magenta out of the, I guess I need to do my dark pink first, spice pink first. Three more steps and we will have a completed rose. You know, it's not every time that you can paint a rose exactly like your teachers, so that's going to be like a very satisfying thing is to be like, yeah, I can paint me a rose just like my teacher and everything will be in exactly the same spot. Okay. And there goes our next step. Look at that depth that we're getting in there. Okay, so we're going to go into the same, same kind of steps. If you want to fast forward ahead to the finish, um, then that's kind of interesting, I think, because then we're going to do a couple of fun steps if you feel like you've got this already. It's the same steps for, you know, basically all the way through all seven pieces of rows. You just follow the map and you're good to go. Remember, if you're seeing something, to make sure to go ahead and stipple over that. Now, I have on my layer 5, um, I have just a little bit. It's showing me where it's drawn out or maybe on the edges and stuff. So you can see where to go ahead and um, get the bend and the leaps and stuff. So. Just draw this pink out in that area. Into white. Now, if you notice on this um, rose over here, we've got this really faded, faded, faded um, look. You could mix a little bit of your um, background blue in with this to make that petal edge disappear. So mine's going to look a little bit more defined. 
but if you wanted to have the, the edges fade off, you just would mix your mix of blue in it to make it disappear. There's a lot of manipulating that you can do um, and easily do to change the look of the rose. Mine is going to be a little bit more base coaty or um, more finished rose. This is very much more rustic. I'm not looking for my map. my neck looking over there. Okay, we want to fade that out. And this is mostly dark. When you get to where things are really close, you can put a piece of tape over there or you can just kind of lean your brush in. over here and this gets soften don't leave any sharp edges round everything out <clears throat> and I just corner loaded this um, color onto my um, brush. Now I can't remember which corner I loaded. Okay, that one. So I can just use the little edge of that just to scumble in. Okay, into petal pink. Just take your paper towel and fold it over when you fill up one side. Okay, now I'm on layer six. Layer six has a little bit of one of those things where this comes around and dips under, and then this goes over. This one is to the inside. So we'll go into our white. to stay out of those white edges so I've just gotten some in that and then I go back and erase my pink so paint is wonderful as an eraser so if you make a mistake just get your butt down in there and go back over it with the color that you used previously that's how you erase with paint trying to decide if I need to, and I'm going to go ahead and deepen that just a little bit. And I didn't think I needed it at the depth, but I'm finding that I think I do. Or maybe I'm finding that I think I prefer. 
for it. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, I'm left layer seven. Because I already got a lot of our color established, so I'm going to go out here and just going to brighten up my highlights with my white. I have some nice brights over here. And then this is going to get, I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything that I see there because I need to put some darks on the flip side there. And these are accurate. Just a little bit. Get that dark along this edge. Okay, and that just gave us some nice roughly little bows. Now let's talk about a couple of fixes here. Um, I've got a little bit of separation right here, and I've got a little bit of separation right here. So what I would do is I would isolate that leaf, and I would be like, okay, that's on layer four. And I would just squinch it over and fix the shading with my dry rub. It. Which one's number four? These are numbered, by the way, on the stencils. It's going to be the last one I pick up, I think. Okay, so for example, I've got that little bit of separation right there. So I can go back into this color and I can slide that just over just a little bit. And maybe just a little bit more to just get rid of that or to increase the shading or any of those actions. So anywhere where you say you want to have just a little bit more of something, maybe it's a little bit lost over here. Um, that petal is on number two. So I can come back over here on number two. Make sure I... And I can give that just a little increase. And now that's not so lost anymore. So it gives you the ability, you can go into you could also go back now and you could float if you desired. So I can go into these folds and I can just increase the ruffle of the folds. I could increase and bring in some ruffles where I wanted. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to give this kind of rustic look. And that is one of my favorite techniques. It's using the sticky mesh. Um, and then you just put it over the top, take your white paint, and you sticky mesh right over the top of it. And I need a little bit more paint. And that just gives us a little bit of kind of country, rustic charm, burlap kind of look. Okay, and that is how. Now, if I wanted to do some other um, losing my edges and borders and stuff like that, the way that I can do that is to make it more like the background, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so the, the final step that I'm going to share with you today is to take and make an edge or a border leave a project. Like say, for example, this up here is making me a little bit sad because it's so kind of forward. It doesn't settle in. I can take, I've got my blue color, and I can just kind of glaze over the edge of that rose, and I can make it more like the background, and that is going to make my edges soften and fade down. Okay, we could also tint 
Um, we could do, this brush has got another color on it. I think that's reading blue or green, and I've got blue on here, but it's kind of pretty looking. So you could take this and you could use your stencils, and you could put some little tints of Indian turquoise or something like that. Okay, now that you've painted a rose in seven easy steps, um, I hope that you realize that you could take anybody's palette, um, any project from magazines, books, um, or any media source that you have, um, pattern packets, and you could create, just pull out their dark, pull out their medium, pull out their highlights, and any accents and stuff like that, and you're going to apply them using the values. So value meaning that we have darks and lights. Um, your dark value is your shade, your light value is your highlight, and your middle value is what you base coat the whole thing in. So using that information, you could create a rose in any color um, at any time. And it's pretty magical stuff. I hope you enjoy.